This week, Uber the top, old Deckard meets new who? And smile, we're in Dubai. This is how a self-driving car sees the world. LiDAR sensors feed the car with a continuous 360-degree view of its surroundings, along with crucial depth information. It is the key technology for a successful autonomous drive. This week in the US, a mighty court case got underway as Google's autonomous car spin-off company Waymo and Uber locked horns in a battle that could have seen Uber's self-driving taxi plans stall. What was expected to be a three-week battle over who had access to the secret keys that make autonomous cars work was suddenly ended on Friday as the two sides agreed to stop locking horns and work together. An out-of-court settlement seems to have sealed the deal. With that possible roadblock removed, Uber's plans to taxi us around without a driver are a step closer. And they're not stopping there. Uber continues to look to the future of transportation, which in just a few years might look very different to the way it looks now. Dan Simmons has been looking up. Even self-driving cabs will get stuck in jams, so this is Uber's vision. When you're tight for time, go by air. It's ambitious and so is the timescale. Our goal is, uh, by 2020, to launch our first demonstrator flights in Dallas and Los Angeles to show that as a proof of concept that this can work, and then work to scale by 2023 and 2025, so we're providing commercial flights to a lot of our riders, uh, giving them a new way to travel. One of Uber's partners, Bell Helicopters, has showed off its design for a four-seater cabin, which could include a pilot. Here's their 360 view with the alternative setup, four seats, four passengers. The aircraft, like our cars, would navigate automatically. It's electric with a range of about 60 miles, they say. Now, we've seen other designs for air taxis of late, including Chinese firm Ehang's 184, which recently shuttled actual people in this autopiloted drone. And this air cab by German firm Volocopter, which uses 18 rotors and nine separate battery packs, just in case. While NASA and the FAA are working on new air traffic control systems for these type of craft in the United States, it's the FAA that will have to be convinced self-piloting electric air cabs are safe. We will ask the applicants to come forward with their engineering proposals of what tests will they propose to do so that we can ensure that if there's a fire or a short or something goes wrong during a flight, that somebody can safely land and get away from that aircraft before it does damage to the people on board the aircraft or on the ground for that matter. So will it work? Here's Uber's case study. We've landed in LA, traffic's a nightmare and a taxi would take us 80 minutes, whereas the air trip to the Skyport, plus a short transfer, is less than half an hour. And Uber says it could end up costing about the same amount. OK, there are many reasons why self-flying electric taxis sound like a good idea. But when you're saving less than one hour, Uber's dream will need to run smoothly to deliver. Mr. Simmons, very busy airspace right now. It's bleed to bleed up there. <laughs> Unfortunately, the weather's closing in, Mr. Simmons. I'm not quite sure we're going to be able to get you away tonight. <laughs> really sorry, we're just cleaning out the cabin. <laughs> Your two kilos is over, I'm afraid. 
Might we lose a penguin? Ah, we're just recharging your taxi at the moment, Mr. Simmons. It'll be a, be a while. At least that last one shouldn't be too much of a problem. Uber have teamed up with EV specialists ChargePoint and are predicting a four-minute juice-up time. Now, that would be special. Sorry, you were running 17 and a half seconds late and the pilots had to cancel. Please do book again via the app. But perhaps the most challenging part of this project is to get us, the public, comfortable with the idea of taking an air taxi. When we think about consumer adoption of new technologies, this is not a problem that is novel or unique to air travel. Uh, we saw this with elevators uh, when they first came out. And actually, in order to uh, get consumers comfortable with it, an elevator, uh, an elevator operator would remain in the elevator, even if after it was elect uh, made electronic, just to give consumers uh, comfort. We're going to be doing the same with autonomous vehicles right now, as we have safety drivers staying in the car, uh, explaining this sort of technology to, uh, to riders. And the same will be true with our pilots. We'll be launching with pilots who will serve not only as the operators of the flight, but as a ambassador to get riders comfortable with this new mode of transit. So soon enough, they'll forget about its novelty and be back to texting and making other use of their time while in transit. Just like the Uber Waymo court case over who owns the specialist tech that makes self-driving cars work, the creation of the flying cab will no doubt have its own dogfight in court. Perhaps that's another reason why Uber's keen to get in early. That was Dan. Now, the first place that we're expecting these flying cabs to take to the air is, of course, the city of Dubai, which always promises to foster and allow trials of new technologies. Although when we visited last month, it soon became clear that flying taxis there too are still a few years off. But one big change that is being unveiled is not to do with aircraft, but with its airport. Kate Russell has been looking at what's new in arrivals. Dubai International is the world's busiest airport for international passengers. Nearly 90 million people went through it in the last year, and in the next couple, it plans to expand annual capacity by one third again. This airport has two runways, um, it has three terminal buildings and four major concourses, but we have room for no more. So whatever growth we take from this point forward, it has to be done with the existing infrastructure. So Dubai International has decided if you can't get bigger, you have to get smarter. I was invited for a peek inside its brand new airport command and control centre just before it becomes fully operational. This airport has been kitted out with the latest camera equipment to help staff predict the flow of passenger traffic. The technology is kind of cool. What it does is it uses 3D cameras in the ceiling and it looks for the outline of humans on the floor moving around and then it tracks them through the whole process. Airport staff can get this information on smartphones and tablets, which helps them to direct the crowd, open new gates and even tell passengers where their baggage is. While all this data helps keep the airport moving, the amount being collected is also causing some issues. Already there's 7 billion data points in there and we've yet to connect it up to everything. So we've still, we've got baggage data and passenger data, but we've yet to put in things like energy consumption and water consumption and these, as we bring all of that together, we can really optimise and the airport will make it more efficient and drive for even more passengers. So what do you do when you need a data centre in a hurry? Well, building one inside shipping containers is definitely one solution. As Dubai prepares to play host to a massive World Expo in 2020, the airport had to do some quick thinking to be able to handle the extra 10 million passengers a month. This solution took just over 12 months to build. A traditional data centre built out of bricks and concrete would normally be about two to three years. Next on the list of high-tech upgrades is face recognition to clear immigration quickly, AI to predict seasonal fluctuations in demand, and a system to tell passengers when their baggage will hit the carousel. All great news if you're passing through the airport, but there's a solid business case for all these upgrades too. The more passengers we can put through this site, 
the more profitable this airport will become. And it's better for the city, it's better for the economy. Um, uh, so we're really working hard to make sure we maximise the use of this uh, of Dubai International site. With aviation projected to contribute almost 40% of Dubai's wealth in the next couple of years, this airport will continue to be a vital part of the economy.